Right then, V6 Touareg video now. So this one, if you watch the Rothwell videos, weren't getting quite as far as the uh, V10 in certain places, mainly because of the clearance underneath and stuff like that. So, oh, it's always interrupting the videos. He shouldn't even be here. He's not sick. So yeah, it, it, the clearance were a big problem in a few places. Obviously this has got coil spring suspension, so it's not, um, you can't just jack it up and get other stuff, but you can't really jack mine up anyway because you max CVs out, so it is what it is. Um, the other thing that we've not quite sorted yet, this pulls the torque really aggressively in, in reverse. The V10 does, but the V6 seems to be a little bit worse. So we've been trying to play with the tune just to try and get a little bit, but not quite got there, but hopefully it don't give us any problems. So the ground clearance is a, the biggest issue we've got, quite an easy one to fix. So this is our lift kit that we make, pretty straightforward. To be fair, other than these are just bushings, basically, made, machine from aluminium, nothing too fancy. The biggest part that took a little bit of working out exactly how long we could get away with it and how we'd do it. Other people do make these sort of things, but this is what goes on the bottom stroke. We do ours a little bit differently to what I've seen, try and stop them bending. Um, but I've had no grief with them on the V10, so really happy. But the hardest thing to get for these is these fine pitch, this length bolt, and then we have to have them galvanised and mess about, so it is a bit of a pain. So the kit is not really anything fancy. I'm sure somebody could put it together themselves quite easily. But the work and getting all these little bits together is a bit of a pain. So we've got that. When I did my body lift, when we, when we lift it here, you'd end up with a little bit of positive camber, so you need to adjust it. So we just know that the bushes are going to be stuck. So we've got some new Powerflex bushes to put in. So that's the rear lower bush. So we'll get that put in while we're doing this. And then we can, the, the bolts are not here, but we're going to get new camber bolts. So we're probably going to have to just chop them. And then the brake lines, which we don't really need these, but we've just got these because we reckon they might be a little bit tight in places. And we have got, after we've done this, we've checked the fitments all, all right we might end up doing an even bigger lift on this if we have any more clearance issues and do like a four inch lift or something like that. But at the minute, this is just a two inch lift, which will be plenty. Doing any more will be a little bit starting to mess about. We, um, it's escaped. It's first time. What? No, 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 well, yeah, diff drop, it, it does want diff drop. That's the next thing. The steering rack universal joint, we'd have to make that longer because you're moving the subframes away from the bodywork as such. Not like on a chassis car where everything's mounted to the chassis and you're just lifting the body up. This, you're sort of moving things away from so, brake lines and stuff. So there's that. And obviously, this is only giving us an inch on the top of the struts and then an inch on the bottom, which is lifting the strut only an inch, which on these is not a problem. But on the air ride equipped cars, you're already able to max, pretty much max the um, CVs out on the dry shafts so we need to do a diff drop if we go any further which I do want to do it on mine but doing a diff drop on that is going to be an horrible job because it's all really tied into the subframe so it'll be a lot of racking a lot of welding so we will do it at some point if anything to save the dry shafts I've not broken one yet which I'm shocked about even the one when it had no track rod and it were all the max out that's still on there and working fine so anyway we'll get this sorted and then we've got a few other little bits that we're going to do a few more modifications and then we'll uh, be ready for after Christmas.
So Jake's finally got it sorted. A little bit more playing about. We've ended up finding a damaged ball joint on that side, which we're gonna to have to sort out. Doing the brake lines, the brake flow took a little bit longer than we wanted it to. Um, there's something else as well. I can't remember what else. There's something else he's done. But anyway, we've got it all sorted. So we've just had the tape measure out before filming this. Normally I don't do that, but I, I didn't think we were gonna put it in the, I wasn't gonna talk about it, basically. My phone's ringing for some reason. Um, but yeah, it appears that we've got more of a lift than we expected, so we took a video of it before, but I never took any notes of what it was, but it was, what was it before? 895, weren't it? Yep. 895. 885 on back. 885, yeah. so like pretty much 35 inch, and now we're at 37 and a half inch, so it's two and a half inch, so putting a two inch block there and just lifting it up to get us two and a half inch, didn't know how. But then the front, we've gone up a fair bit more. So we're at about 980 there. And what were we at before? It was 890. 890. So it was 35 inch before, so 890, 35 inch. And now we're at sort of 38 and a half inch. So we've ended up somehow three and a half inch at the front which it were always a little bit lower at the front, but now it's a little bit higher. Whether that's annoying or not, I'm not too sure. Um, I don't think it's gonna have any adverse effects. So we'll try it. The CVs, they don't look at too bad of an angle as they are now, which ignore all the brake fluidity kicked to tub over. Um, you see it dry shafts there now, I don't think you're looking at the right place. Um, and when it's jacked all the way up, we've just checked them and they still do turn, there's no funny noises, but the true test of we'll get it on some trails and when you sort of pop the front over that's usually when I had problems with the, the V10. But we shall see if we have to, we'll do a diff drop on these or I might see if we can uh, make this a little bit less because this is just the V10 kit that we've put on here that we had no problems with. But yeah, we'll see. And uh, yeah, I think the next time we'll see this working, it'll be uh, at Ill and Ditch in Chester. Go and get something done. You can be. You don't have to be silent. Yeah, stood the. Yeah, just do something productive. Why have your desk? Put some tools away. Eat something. Just do something. So, that wasn't the end of the video. So we'll go back in time, and watch Mark start something that I didn't think he was going to start while I weren't there. So, I've got this one for mine, but the ones for these haven't turned up yet, but bear with me, this is preventative stuff. So, we've put a receiver hitch on the front, which is better than these for towing, which is not the only reason why we got it, but that'll become apparent pretty soon, but we have been in touch with winch max which that'll probably be in the next video after all the off-roading stuff and basically we've got like a, a plate with handles on it that we can put a winch on that we can slide into here and then we're going to do the same on craig's v10 and then he's got basically him and scott can share a winch and then if we want to if we go around the back We've also put one on the back, which this is not finished now because we're still waiting for the bumper part to come. But basically, we can swap this. I know I need to put my head around. It's a tight fit. Mark likes to make everything 
a stupidly tight fit. There, we're in. So yeah, we've got the same thing going on here, which this is not an Amarok tow bar. We just made this out of box section. So it's had a little bit more extra bracing and stuff like that. We had to weld it with a big welder. Free passes on everything as well. So it's all very strong. So we can put the winch on the back as well, which we can put the winch on the back of mine. And the other reason is so the tow bar was stuck in this. And now we can share the tow bar between because on Monday, so the bank holiday after Christmas, I'll stop messing with that. We're going to Hill and Ditch at Chester. This, the V10, and Craig's V10, do some off roading. And because I've not ordered all of these in time, we'll uh, hope that we don't need too much towing. But Scott's running on all terrain tyres just to test them. So I think we'll probably be doing a lot of towing.